Hi there, welcome to the channel. To start with, please subscribe and like if you like what you see. We're here today with Gibbs Key Marine to have a look at this beautiful 2011 Targa 50. It's had a pretty major internal refit, but let's start on the outside. So we'll start with the tender, which you can see here, which is undercover. This is on the Fairline launch, tender launch system, as it was called. So basically that mechanism there cantilevers out backwards obviously we're on the pontoon here and drops the tender into the water it hasn't got i don't think a high low platform but you can see over here letterbox passerelle pop-up cleats stern cleats and then the fair lead over there and the, and the uh, cleat on the deck it's got access from both sides which is quite nice so you can board from either side We'll just take a quick walk up the side of the deck. So this one's got a blue hull and it's got those fantastic hull windows. This was sort of an iconic boat really at its time. If you look back on one of my previous videos, I've got one of the last Targa 47s that uh, came out of Fairline and this is potentially coming on for the first of the new style and design of Fairline Targas. So this is the Targa 50. Do apologize for the wind and i also do apologize if you can hear the diggers in the background going backwards and forwards with their reversing alarm so we'll do the best we can so let's go and have a look on board teak deck is where we join it as i said there's a door either side these are really neat they're on little hydraulic rams but what's clever is they actually fit into the combing of the boat down here is a little pop-up section so you've got the control for the tender launch system and your shore power, two shore power sockets down there. That presents us to the aft deck, where you can go up this side if you want to, to the fore deck. There's exactly the same on this side. So there's another entry point, depending on <laughs> Depending on how you're moored, and again you have access over here. In fact, let's head up to the fore deck whilst it's currently not raining. Really, really wide side decks, as you can see here. Again, lovely, lovely big hull windows. They don't look quite so large from outside. But you've got the top window here, and then there's a lesser sort of lower window section here. But really, really nice wide side decks. You can walk up these feet side by side. Take you to the fore deck where we have these cushions. I believe these are brand spanking new. And you can see here why this boat was so revolutionary. The light that floods in inside is quite impressive. So all of this section here is glass. You can see the front section or the aft section as it would be there opens as an escape hatch, but all of that puts light into the fore cabin. Anchor handling gear up here. Nice stainless steel anchor with what looks like some stainless steel chain and under here it says life raft but in all fairness it's somewhere to store the life raft so life raft would sit there and then you yeah, then have two really large bins i would imagine for fenders but they're, they're drained which is quite nice lovely stainless steel anchor in there for this anchor locker and lumar winch but look at the look at the cantilever mechanism holding this up So now you can see looking back, you can see those sun cushions, you can see all the glass roof that illuminates the fore cabin. At the moment it's got a sunscreen on the windscreen, which is why it's got that funny netting on. And you can see there the large sunroof that opens and there's track vision, um, two track vision domes there and a open array radar. And we are today in the port of Pool. So the other thing actually while we're out here, I don't know how well you can see this here, but down here, look, we've got deck lights. So right the way along the deck, the whole thing is illuminated, making it sort of pretty at night, but also quite nice to walk around in the evening. There's your diesel filler down here. This is again quite clever. So this section of boat actually acts as a grab rail. So as you come around here, it gives you something to hold on to. Underneath here is the aft cockpit, which we'll have a look at in a moment. 
fold out table so this section can obviously be either be a very large sun lounger or it can be just a coffee table area because that table is on a hydraulic lifting leg and underneath both sides here are little cabinets so slide in all the way under there you've got a bit of storage for ropes and fenders and the like that is exactly the same on that side this one here i think is an access point for the passerelle yeah there you go so that's what a letterbox passerelle looks like when it's letterboxed and for the sake of it my foot on it for a minute so what happens is this mechanism here is basically pushed out by this ram it pops out the letterbox out there goes all the way out the back These are the switches, so deck lights, sunshade, in or out, and the uh, passerelle. And here we have a little bit of storage. Underneath here is a barbecue grill. And underneath there is the engines, which we'll have a look at in a moment. Uh, quite logically over here, you've got manual fuel pumps and fuel cutoff changeover switches and the pull pin for the engine bay fire system. As you can see, very, very large twin sliding doors, or one sliding door that folds back. This whole glass section here cantilevers up to here, and again, it gives you just a much, much wider open area. I don't know if you can see, but this section up here is part of the sunshade, so that slides all the way out here, right the way back. So if you're sitting in the aft section here, you can shade yourself. So today will be a perfect day. If you want to sit down here, be out the sun, you can put the sunshade out. Scupper down here, so when you, if you do get water in the aft cockpit, it doesn't go into the saloon. And just to say, this is a really fabulous saloon. Let's just give you a few moments to see. So seating on the starboard side, a couple of beautifully styled little pull-out stools there. This table, as you would imagine, is high-low and folds out like so and that gives you that beautiful dining area or lounging area galley is then over here on the opposing side which consists of a little fridge in there a sink under there and again i won't open every drawer because this is actually somebody's boat <laughs> storage under there ceramic hob, microwave convection cooker there, and this is quite nice, a pull-out drawer dishwasher. I do like a dishwasher. And then there's another slightly larger fridge over this side in there. And just to look at it from the other way around, so this is this window section here, this whole window section here pops out and gives you access across the whole back of the boat. Now, if I take a look up here, we've also up here adding to or continuing the glass theme of these later generation Fairline Targas. There's a screen here, so if you want to, you can cut the sun out by pushing this little button here. And that pops that blind back across. So it covers the sun up. What a great bright light area. You can now see those two windows over that side little one that we looked at from the outside and the, pretty much the whole of the boat is an arc of glass which cleverly follows right the way forwards even to the outside there it's recently been recarpeted i think a lot of the upholstery has been redone i know the outside cushions are new fabulous little sort of co-pilot snoozing zone here which is great because imagine if you're going along that will give you a great view out the back down here is your AV equipment, and then there's a couple of extra drawers under here for the usual bits and pieces. Oh, DVD player and a like in there. So that's one step up, then takes you to the helm. But actually, before we get to the helm, I do want to show you the crockery, because this is quite neat. So that's the Fairline crockery, all neatly badged up as Fairline. Another storage unit in there. Carbon support on the back of the seat. One step up, two steps up, 
takes you to the helm position. Really nice, comfortable double helm seat. It's going to pop some of the electrics on. So, starting for over this side is a full yacht controller side power control system. So you can use any of these buttons to either put the anchors up and down, control the bow or the stern thrusters. Because over here you have bow and stern thruster. Down there you can probably see there is the fresh water and the black water tank gauges along with the Cummings generator control panel in there. The whole boat is full of AC so there's air conditioning, reverse cycle air conditioning throughout and I believe in every single cabin. Throttles, lovely Fairline steering wheel, GPS radio system, ventilation which is quite nice, screen wash and then engine starters and I imagine these are I don't know what those guys are if you know what they are put them in the comments oh that one's water temperature and this one's probably tri data either way so there you go you can have charts on that side and then you could have say radar over here on that one and that is your steering position. Now, if I take a couple of steps back again, I just wanted to show you, I'm not going to do it today because it's sort of trying to rain at the moment, but this entire section here of this roof here slides all the way back. So that gives you a massive, massive opening. Work that with the rear door section and you've got a very light, bright, Boat. There is a little bit of side ventilation, so you can open the windows that side, and you can open the window on this side to get ventilation through. Also comes with both surround sound system. So that's the saloon and the cockpit. Couple of steps down and to the right. Starboard, if you prefer, takes you down to this little lobby area. Then there's three doors: one there for the fore cabin, one there for the day heads and two because there's a split aft cabin. But we'll actually start by going forward. So that is the fore cabin. Now this is on this boat is a master cabin because look at the floor space. I mean I could probably lie down there to be fair. If we start, remember that glass space we looked at above? That gives you these three incredible skylights one of which is opening. There's a blind so you can close those all off. There's AC ventilation in the back there. Those first section of hull windows that we looked at outside. They replicate on both sides. There's a little dresser down there. Obviously, as you would expect, decent sized TV on the wall. Then in here we have full height lined hanging wardrobe. This one here is shelving. And then behind this one, we have the ensuite heads, which is quite impressive. It's half a step down. You've obviously got, as you would expect, stylish sink. Those hull windows again, those three glass panel hull windows. A completely enclosed shower, which is really nice. And then storage along here like so and like so I don't know if I mentioned it before but it also comes with Webasto warm air heating so again that is just an incredibly large for a 50 foot boat that's a very large fore cabin there's storage under the bed as you would expect and little things like power sockets down there and then all of these units here are storage as well reading lights you see the AC controller is over there so now we'll take a turn and head aft first door we come to takes us into the day heads like so so you have a sink again you've got the benefit of those large hole windows storage above in these two units similar format with the self-contained shower 
and obviously vacuum flush Lewis sitting under there. Now this, because it's the day heads, is also the ensuite to one of the aft cabins, but we're gonna leave that and go through the main door. So now you can see there's two doors. There's one door here, and then one step down, there's a second door over there. So we're gonna take the first door here, which takes us into the aft cabin. So the design of this boat is they split this area in two. So you can see here, there's a very large bulkhead wall. That's the other aft cabin, but it still gives you decent floor space, decent sized double bed. Again, you have access to that really good light through those windows, storage running all the way down the side there. Then in here, again, another full size wardrobe. And then here we have access through the Jack and Jill, Jack and Jill door to that really spacious sort of day heads and on the suite to one of the two aft cabins. This massive cabinet here, which I don't know if I can even get it in, controls or hides all of your 24 volt DC systems. So domestics one and two, 12 volt systems, and then all your 240 mains shore power breakers are there as well. And then down in here, we have the laundry space, Sanusi washer dryer, and then with just a little cupboard above for towels or washing powder or whatever. Now if I spin around from here, it gives me the second half cabin. This one is two singles, and the other one was a double. Now I don't know, so you need to check whether they move together and become two doubles, two singles, or two singles and two singles, depending on what you like. But again, extensible floor space, headroom the whole way around here. So if I turn this round, you can see still good headroom here. There is obviously a cutaway just here as we go underneath the beds or down towards the beds. But you get the benefit of those huge hole windows again, storage all the way along, lighting. Behind me here, we have the light switches and the AC control panel. And then over here, we have another decent size full hanging wardrobe. So there you go, that is three cabin, three heads, fell on target 50. And again, look at this floor space. This is quite a clever way of moving it forward. You just get more natural light because you can have overhead light, which you can't obviously have in the aft cabin. So that's the interior. Hope you've enjoyed that. Let's go and have a look at the engine bay and the aft cabin. Let us have a peek under the engine hatch. So there you go. Pretty decent engine access. Nice step down. So these are Volvo Penta D9575s, there's two of them. And they're running on conventional shafts. So I'm just gonna spin it around here. So there you go. There's one. There's one thing I've never worked out, and anyone who knows, please enlighten me, why some Volvo Penta engines are green and some are white. These are Volvo Penta engine D9s, as I say, and they're white. We have D9s in our broom, but for some reason they are green. Over there, you can see the water intakes. If you've ever watched any of my other videos, you can see the seawater strainers. There's the heating system up there. These massive, great big things are the exhaust systems. If I take a turn around behind me, you've got the 240 pack, the Victron um, inverter, the master volt system, all the domestic trip systems. There's the Owen generator down here. And I believe around the back here is a little bit of engineering space. So above us up there would be the passerelle. There's a few pumps in there, a few hydraulic pumps in there and bits and pieces. 
I will put the performance figures in uh, in the description below and one fuel tank that side and another fuel tank over there so there you go that's the engine bay I'll just hike myself out of here and we'll have a quick peek it is a little bit busy but we'll have a quick peek in the crew cabin let's just drop this down So crew cabin is under here, so I've taken the cushion off. Really simple, we just lift that up, like so. Just gonna push this door out of the way. I will just take my shoes off actually, because it's, it's quite nice in there. This, as you can see, is quite obviously been used as a storage cabin, or a sort of shed, if you like. Interesting thing is, I don't know how well you can see this, but it's nicely fitted out, it's got the same wood, TV, access window at the back here. Now, underneath there would be the bed, just slightly tucks underneath. And hidden down underneath there, you can see is the loo. And underneath here is the sink. There's probably some other storage under bits and pieces, but I don't want to move everything out of the way. But in, interesting and quite nice, it's also got its own AC unit. So there you go, that is a Targa 50. Thank you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Please like, please subscribe. Thank you to Gibbs Key Marine for letting me have a look around and we'll see you next time.